Good evening and welcome to COVID-19, Saskatchewan's Next Steps, a new special across all CBC Saskatchewan platforms. I'm Sam McKegg, and in a few moments, Premier Scott Moe will address the province. Afterward, we will have full reaction from the Leader of the Opposition, our political panel, and a medical expert. But first, let's take a look at Saskatchewan's latest COVID-19 numbers. There are six new cases today, all of them in northern Saskatchewan. That's the highest one-day jump since last Saturday. There were also nine more recoveries today. That drops the active case count down to 61. In total, of the 326 cases, more than 80% have recovered. Five people are currently in hospital. One is under intensive care. Four people have died. CBC Saskatchewan political reporter Adam Hunter joins me now. Back on Wednesday, March 18th, Premier Mo issued a state of emergency for our province. Adam, I know before the declaration, people were wondering how long until everything would be shut down. Now, 35 days later, many are beginning to wonder when things will start to go the other way. We're about to hear from the Premier, Adam. What key messages are we looking for? Well, Sam, people are really looking for that reopen plan, and we know those details will not be shared until tomorrow morning when Premier Mo and Dr. Shahab lay out the plan for reopening the province. The Premier has said that Adam, that's not going to be like flipping a switch. It's not going to be happening overnight. Unfortunately, we're going to have to go because already Premier Mo is ready to speak. He's been using words like gradual, methodical and cautious when it comes to the plan to reopen our province. And tonight, that road begins with an address to Saskatchewan citizens. We take you now live to the office of the Premier at the Saskatchewan Legislature. Good evening, everyone. Tonight I want to talk to you about where we've been, where we are, and where we are going as we fight the spread of COVID-19. I want to begin tonight by saying thank you. Thank you for following all of the guidelines and the restrictions that have been put in place to contain the spread of COVID-19. The last few weeks have been difficult for everyone. This is not how things are supposed to be. People are meant to be together. And it's against our very nature to stay apart. But by doing so, we have protected ourselves, our families, our neighbours and our province. By doing so, we protected our health care workers and we ensured that our health, our health system was not overwhelmed. And tonight I can tell you, without any doubt, it is working. Saskatchewan has reduced the spread of COVID-19. We have flattened the curve. And that is thanks to you, each and every one of you. Over the past few weeks, we all had to quickly learn a strange new way to live. And we did. We learned to stay physically away from one another, while at the same time staying connected and supporting one another through this difficult time. We figured out ways to work from home if we were able. Employees at grocery stores and pharmacies and other businesses that stayed open well, they came up with new ways of doing things to protect themselves and their customers while still providing an essential service to the Saskatchewan people. We learned about physical distancing, self-isolation, and flattening the curve. We learned how to pull together by staying apart. And we did all of these things as if lives depended on it, because they do. We have seen what happened in other parts of the world where this virus spread quickly and the health system became overwhelmed. Well, thankfully, that has not happened here. And that is because of you. So thank you. Thank you to everyone working in our health care system. The doctors, the nurses, the technologists, and the pharmacists. The cooks, the cleaners, and the maintenance workers. The students, volunteers, and the retirees who have returned to the workforce. Thanks to all of the people providing the other essential services that we need. And I'm thinking about the folks working in our grocery stores and in our food distribution system. The workers delivering food and parcels to our homes. The truckers who keep our supplies moving. The utility workers who ensure that we have power, heat and clean water. The farmers and the ranchers. And of course, our first responders, the police, the firefighters, our EMTs and paramedics. 
Thank you to the parents whose kids have been at home these past few weeks instead of at school. And thanks to the teachers for finding ways to ensure that our kids can still be students. Thank you as well to everyone who isn't working right now. Everyone who is doing the right thing by staying at home to reduce the spread. Thank you to the businesses that have been required to close temporarily or to severely cut back your operations. And to all the employees of those businesses who are now staying at home because you may have lost your job. I know this is an extremely difficult time for you and for your family. But tonight, because of the tremendous effort of Saskatchewan people and the success that we have had in reducing the spread, I think we can begin to provide a bit of optimism and a roadmap for businesses and services to gradually reopen and to allow for more people to return to work. Again, the only reason that we can begin to have this conversation tonight is because together we have reduced the spread and we have flattened the curve. By any objective measure, what we are doing in Saskatchewan, it is working. What you are doing is working. As of today, Saskatchewan has 326 cases of COVID-19. Four people have unfortunately passed, and we mourn with their families and with their friends. But 261 people have now recovered from the virus, and today there are only 61 active cases and just five people in hospital. So to put those numbers in context, on a per capita basis, the number of COVID-19 cases in Saskatchewan is about 70% below the Canadian average. And the number of serious outcomes, hospitalizations and deaths, is more than 90% below the national average. And at the same time, the COVID-19 testing rate in Saskatchewan is more than 40% higher than the national average. We are doing so well here. So we can continue to reduce the spread and to keep those case numbers low, while at the same time, can we gradually allow more businesses to reopen and more Saskatchewan people to return to work? Well, I believe we can, but only if we proceed with caution, great caution. Our government takes this decision extremely seriously. We know there are risks on both sides. If we move too quickly, we risk increasing the spread of COVID-19. If we move too slowly, we risk permanent damage to the livelihoods of thousands of Saskatchewan people, businesses that may never reopen, and jobs that may never come back. So we have to find the right path. So tomorrow, we will unveil a plan to gradually and methodically reopen businesses and public services that have been closed because of this pandemic. It is a plan that is developed in close consultation with Saskatchewan's Chief Medical Health Officer, Dr. Shahab, and it is a plan that will be carried out in five phases. And as we proceed with each phase, we will carefully monitor COVID-19 case numbers and we will adjust the plan as required. As businesses are allowed to reopen and employees return to work, they will have to follow stringent physical distancing and cleaning procedures just like the grocery stores and many other businesses that are open and operating safely today. As we cautiously proceed through this reopening process, some of the other restrictions will remain in place for the foreseeable future. We know that in Saskatchewan and, and elsewhere, the largest and most dangerous outbreaks have been related to travel, to large gatherings, and to seniors' care homes. So all of those restrictions will remain in place. We also know that aggressive testing and contact tracing are key to controlling the spread of COVID-19. Canada has one of the highest testing rates in the world, and Saskatchewan has one of the highest testing rates in Canada. That will continue. In fact, we are looking at ways to increase the testing and the contact tracing in the days ahead. Ongoing restrictions in high-risk areas and aggressive testing and contact tracing, this is how we will continue to keep our case numbers low and manageable as we proceed with caution through the reopening process. Tomorrow, Dr. Shahab and I will outline which businesses and services will be included in each phase of the reopened Saskatchewan plan. And some dates in May, 
when the first couple of phases will begin. So again, let me be very clear. This will be a gradual, methodical, and a cautious process. It's not like flipping on a light switch. If anything, it's more like a dimmer switch that's been turned down. And over the next several weeks, we will gradually be turning up the light once again on Saskatchewan's economy. It's been said that adversity doesn't build character, it, it reveals it. Well, I believe that to be true. Here are some examples that reveal everything you need to know about Saskatchewan's character. Alex Pelche of Regina, he decided to make 200 brown bag lunches in his apartment at Easter time. He figured with the pandemic, there was some people that, that may be going hungry. So Alex hit the streets and he gave those 200 lunches to people in need. Meanwhile, in Prince Albert, 79-year-old Eleanor Land decided to fire up her four bread makers. Eleanor's been baking 50 to 60 loaves of bread a week for the Community Cares Kitchen. The kitchen has been providing meals for families that have been impacted by COVID-19. And in Moose Jaw, Chris Merkel decided to post the following on Facebook, and I quote, I will be offering my help to anyone in the city for running errands, and I will gladly go get your groceries or anything you need. I'm a single person with no kids in my 30s. And I feel that I should be putting myself in harm's way before anyone else. These are three stories. These are three stories out of thousands. It's true. Adversity does reveal character. And in this crisis, your character has been revealed as resilient, determined, courageous, and compassionate. Caring and strong, that's Saskatchewan. And I have never been so proud to call this province home. Thank you. You are watching and listening to a news special on CBC Saskatchewan. I'm Sam McKegg. We just heard from the Premier of Saskatchewan. We take you to Saskatoon now to the Leader of the Opposition. NDP Leader Ryan Miley joins me now from City Hall. I'm wondering what stood out to you in the Premier's address? Hi, Sam. Uh, you know, as I think about what's happened in the last few weeks here, it really is clear how many ways people in Saskatchewan have shown an incredible spirit. The ways that people have stepped up, stepped up to make sacrifices of staying home and protecting their health and the health of others. People who have been working at the front lines in healthcare and service industries is an amazing amount of sacrifice that's been made. Uh, it's also really clear that that's getting hard for people. Kids are home from school and can't go see their grandparents and friends. We've got workers who are off the job and don't know how they're going to pay the bills and, and business owners who've closed the doors for public health reasons and now wonder if they'll ever open them again for financial reasons. And with all of that in mind, understand why people are really anxious to, to see some, some change and get back to some level of normal. What matters is that we do that in the safest possible way, that we don't. Uh, do that in a way that can put people in danger. It also matters that we get people the support they need now. And that's something that has been missing. We have not seen as much investment in the people of Saskatchewan in helping businesses and individuals and families and our communities get through this difficult time with additional resources from the province. So we're looking for that right now, as well as a, a long-term plan to make sure that as we come out of this, as we try to rebuild our economy and rebound from this really challenging time, that we're putting people first as we do that. That we're building the kind of economy where everybody's got a chance to succeed, where we're not as vulnerable as this crisis has shown us to be. Ryan, we've got about a minute left. In your opinion, is this plan, this conversation, too soon? Everything depends on, on the details and on continuing to watch what happens coming forward. It's absolutely not too soon for us to be thinking about the future, and it's definitely not too soon for us to be investing in people now. What matters is that the steps that are taken are safe steps, and that we make the choices, not just in how we protect ourselves health-wise, that as well, but also in how we invest in people, so that coming out of this, people are gonna be doing okay during the pandemic, and that our economy will rebound coming out of it. Thanks so much for this, Ryan. Thanks, Sam.
Ryan Miley is the leader of the official opposition in Saskatchewan. He joined us from Saskatoon tonight. So we know where the official opposition stands. And before we connect with our political panel, let's look back at the key points of Premier Mo's speech tonight. Mo says the province has flattened the curve. And he said a lot of thank yous from frontline workers to parents with at home with their kids. Tomorrow, Mo will unveil a five-phase plan to reopen the province. It will be gradual and methodical. And he says many restrictions relating to travel, large groups and care homes will remain. What do you think? How do you want the plan to reopen Saskatchewan to be rolled out? We hit the streets from a distance to find out. Well, I'm hoping he doesn't ease up anything uh, uh, if, if uh, we're not seeing a total flattening of the curve. I mean, I'd like to see no cases for 14 days. Open the restaurants back again and limited seats. Limited seats and social distancing should be okay. I just think it would be a shame and a disservice to the public if all of the campsites and all the beaches were just indefinitely closed because um, people couldn't govern themselves to behave appropriately. We've heard from the Premier, we've heard from the opposition. What does it all mean? Well, in Regina, I'm joined by Marie Mandrake, a political columnist with the Regina Leader Post and Saskatoon Star Phoenix, and CBC Saskatchewan political reporter Adam Hunter. Together, these two make up CBC's political panel on CBC Radio's The Morning Edition. Marie, I want to start with this address by Premier Mo. These are not commonly done by premiers. Why was it important to take to the airwaves and do it this way? Well, I, I think it was really important to send the thank you message that he uh, uh, sent out. Now, I, I think that was the real success of this event. Uh, the thank you and congratulatory notes are important these days because people are frustrated. They're they're clearly sad, and uh, it's been a very depressing week for uh, for Saskatchewan, the whole country. I kind of wrote about it today, and so any time you can sort of see a leader come forward and offer his support in the way I think uh, Premier Scott Moe did successfully today. I think it's a good thing. So there was that element that I kind of thought was pretty successful tonight. Adam, what did we hear from Premier Mo that he hasn't said in a daily briefing? How much of this message is actually new? Well, Sam, we hear from Premier Mo a few times a week in his daily briefings, as you mentioned. We haven't heard from him since Friday. And so uh, today's address, I think, as Murray pointed out, was a number of thank yous. I think I counted about a dozen in there early on in the speech. And then later on, the details that people are really curious about that'll come tomorrow, the reopen plan. Uh, he gave us a little taste of that, the five phases he mentioned. He said that some of those restrictions may be loosened starting in May. We're also hearing that from other premiers across the country. So uh, that is what people really want to know. That's the new stuff in this speech tonight. Of course, some shout outs at the end to people that are helping Saskatchewan out during this difficult time. But a uh, big theme of that, that speech tonight is thank yous and also uh, just a little bit of a tease on the reopen plan. Murray, what do you make of the five phases that Premier spoke very briefly about? How much detail do you think we can actually expect tomorrow? Well, I hope a lot more than we got tonight. To be quite frank, I don't know why he couldn't have outlined the whole entire five phases, or at least in just general terms, to give people some idea what they might be looking forward to. He talked about a May opening date, so we now know that it'll be at least in uh, eight days away, or, or at the earliest in terms of actually doing something to change. So I think there was a lot of preparatory time. I think that's really important, Sam, because I think there'll be a lot of people disappointed uh, when they hear what comes out tomorrow because there are a lot of people expecting, because we've had such success, that we're going to be opening things pretty quickly. And I don't know if he managed, he being the Premier, managed those expectations as well as he possibly could. Uh, I think that'll be the real frustration for him and maybe many others in the province coming tomorrow because there's going to be people asking why aren't they doing what they're doing in Georgia or Florida or elsewhere. Uh, I think by the way that he's the route he's taking uh, is uh, a sound one and I think following the, the advice of Dr. Shahab is absolutely what he needs to be doing but I think he has to do a better job of convincing a lot of people in the public of that. Adam, Premier Mo did say some restrictions around travel, large gatherings and seniors' homes are going to stay in place because of evidence elsewhere that that's where the biggest outbreaks have come from. Travel doesn't surprise me, but how do they allow gatherings even gradually? 
Well, I think that's part of the uh, the plan that's been laid out from the start, even when we uh, started getting into this pandemic, that Dr. Shahab had said, you know, uh, we can have uh, gatherings, we just have to practice social distancing, wash your hands, be careful. Then when the restrictions came in, those, those things started coming down. We came down all the way to 10 people in a gathering. Uh, my guess is that we're going to get to maybe 15 people, 20 people. Uh, some of those things are going to come slowly, but large gatherings, things like rider games or, or concerts, don't expect those things to be loosened right away. Uh, other provinces are dealing with this differently, but we have a bit of a theme in the provinces that are, are having a, a real success so far. Uh, places like Manitoba, Saskatchewan, some of the maritime provinces discussing uh, even dates or when they can reopen. Uh, and it looks like May at the earliest, but uh, it's going to be a different story depending on the province because next door in Alberta, much different story, much higher numbers. Manitoba, similar numbers to Saskatchewan. So Saskatchewan's plan is going to have to be Saskatchewan's plan. It can't be modeling off what someone else is doing. And, and Saskatchewan's going to be uh, one of the first, if not the first province when they announce their plan tomorrow to come out and announce what their phases are and the details of what can open first. Murray, testing is something that we've been talking a lot about over the last couple of weeks. The Premier seems quite proud of the per capita testing, but at the same time, the lab isn't testing nearly as much as it could be or by the Premier's own standards should be. I don't know why we're not doing some sample testing, not just in the general populace, but where people are exposed. What seems to be the consensus best policy uh, of uh, scientists and health is start testing in the medical community, start testing among first responders to make sure that they're not asymptomatic, carrying the virus without showing symptoms and, uh, and possibly affecting colleagues. I think even though we are testing people uh, at the rate of uh, people being sick and showing symptoms, and that's a good thing, obviously, because they, that's the first priority. If we are to get ahead of this, I think what's really required is taking some sampling of people exposed that may not be showing symptoms, but uh, so we. But if we do a, a general testing of that kind of group, we can actually get an idea of how uh, quickly this virus is spreading or how difficult it might be to control. And I think that's one area where they really need to move forward. Uh, we're not anywhere close to the 1,500 tests a day uh, the Premier talked about. And maybe that's one thing that we'll find out more about tomorrow that we can look at. Marie, uh, last word goes to you. Since we're 41 days since the province announced its first case of COVID-19 back on March 12th, how do you think the government has fared through this? You know, uh, their start was so horrible, uh, the expectations were pretty low, but even despite that, I think they've far exceeded expectations. I, I think uh, Premier O has taken the absolute right response in following the lead of the CMOs and Dr. Shahab. Uh, I know it's very difficult for a Premier of uh, a conservative nature and being pressured by uh, businesses, and rightfully so, to want to get on with the moving uh, forward of the economy, as he's going to talk about tomorrow. But I think he's res resisted doing anything silly or drastic, and I think he has shown real leadership in this particular uh, uh, area. There's certain things he could do better, like including a more inclusive group, maybe mayors, maybe the opposition leader, and make it more of a provincial-wide effort. Uh, but so far, overall, uh, uh, I think you have to give uh, Premier Mo and his government a fair bit of credit for the way they've handled it. Thanks so much to both of you for this. Political columnist Murray Mandrake and political reporter Adam Hunter make up our political panel at CBC Saskatchewan. They both joined me from Regina tonight. The biggest question is where this leaves our health care system. For some perspective, we're joined now by Dr. Anne Huang. She is a former deputy medical health officer in Saskatchewan. She oversaw public health programs in the province for the past five years, and we've reached her tonight in Saskatoon. Dr. Huang, I want to start with the timing of this address. Is this the right time to be having this conversation? Hi, Sam. Um, I I think it's actually a good time for the province of Saskatchewan to consider the reopening plan at this time. Um, one, as the Premier has outlined, um, Saskatchewan has actually done a great job in flattening the curve that has given the healthcare system time to prepare. But secondly, um, at this stage, 
due to the warming of weather, it actually gives us an opportunity to practice physical distancing in the great outdoors. So uh, I heard a reader mention, a uh, listener mention about camping or the parks. It actually would be a bit easier for residents to spread out and practice physical distancing if they um, are able to uh, spend time outside more. Um, thirdly, I think it's a good time um, to gradually open up because it gives us a chance to practice um, and put in the major require and avoid the chance of um, colliding with the flu uh, season that will be coming uh, later in the year. Dr. Huang, what are your biggest concerns going forward? I didn't... I did not hear Premier mention any potential need to reinstate the restrictions. And right now, uh, we have the benefit of federal restrictions uh, in terms of border control, as well as the reduction in air travel. As soon as these are lifted, as soon as the air travel resume and the border restrictions are lifted, which are beyond the control of Saskatchewan, higher risk of importation of new cases. And as well, um, I think we have around 10% of the cases so far um, that have not been linked specifically to a previously identified cases. And so there's definitely the risk of community transmission and as you noted at the start, um, we've got uh, new cases now um, being reported in the far north of Saskatchewan. Uh, that's, that's potentially um, a new cluster that's spreading. And so I think it is important that the residents are uh, given clear explanation as to when things might need to get uh, tightened again. Dr. Huang, we have about a minute left. I want to know mm -hmm. how crucial is testing, contact tracing, and possible antibody testing going to be going forward? For the testing, um, I think the province can do better by moving from a passive testing strategy to a more active case finding strategy. At the moment, we're relying on people to call A11 and to get referred. Um, and I agree with Murray that we should be actively testing the essential service worker, not just healthcare workers, but grocery store cashiers, um, our police, our um, uh, firemen, um, our farmers. Um, in the coming months, when the antibody or serological tests become available, it'll give us a sense of how many people might have been infected and what proportion of them may already be immune uh, to COVID-19. Dr. Huang So thank so much. Uh, thank you so much for your time tonight. Thank you. No problem. Dr. Ann Huang is a former deputy medical health officer in Saskatchewan. We reached her in Saskatoon. We've heard a lot tonight about how the province wants to handle getting our industries back open. Here's a quick look at some of the key messages of Premier Mo's provincial address. He will unveil a five-phase plan tomorrow to reopen Saskatchewan. It will begin in May and be assessed at every step. Some large travel, or some travel, large group and care home restrictions will remain. The roadmap will include strict physical distancing and cleaning procedures for businesses. COVID-19 testing and contact tracing will be increased. It will be a gradual, methodical and cautious process. We want to know your thoughts on this. We'd love to hear from you. You can send us your questions, concerns and comments to sasknews at cbc.ca. Tomorrow, CBC Saskatchewan will carry Premier Moe's news conference live at 10.30 a.m. That's where we will learn all the details of what's to come in the next phases, the five phases, and full reaction. You'll be able to watch Premier Mo live on our social media channels, uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, on our website, or listen to it on CBC Radio 1. I'm Sam McKegg. Thanks so much for watching and for listening. You can always find more details on our website at cbc.ca slash sask. Hope you stay safe and have a great night.